Have you noticed it? There's a change in the air and in the press. The return to office frenzy has died out, and a new batch of articles supporting remote work is gaining steam. Could it be that we're winning? Let's find out. Welcome back, my name's Steve and you're watching Live Work Live. Today we're going to take a bit of a victory lap and focus on a few good pieces of news that seem to be emerging lately. I know that YouTube thrives on conflict. We love a good flame war. I'm right, you're wrong. Here's 10 reasons why you suck. Now I've made a few passionate posts in the recent past, all 100% justified and fact-checked, but I don't want this to become just a channel of me ranting all the time. So when I see something positive and worth celebrating, I definitely want to highlight it. And recently, I've been noticing that the tenor of the news coverage of remote work is shifting in a pretty major way. I'm recording this late in September 2021, and just a few weeks and months ago, these were the top news stories on this subject on CNN. It really started as early as March of this year. You know, we had articles like this, Silicon Valley starting to bring workers back to the office, and already CNN uh, started talking about all of these companies that were bringing people back on all their plans and how everything was about to go back to normal. Um, you know, Apple had already started bringing people back as early as May of 2020. You know, there was talk that it's different and everyone is different, but man, there was certainly a, a drive to return to the office. And I think here, you know, we get really specifically into some of the differences. This was a little bit later, I believe in June. And here it's talking about Apple. They finally had a statement here, uh, Tim Cook saying that um, really we all need to be able to be in the office. Um, and he wants to, people to come back as soon as September. So remember that. So that we're already in September right now. He was expecting everyone to be back in the office three days a week come September. And, you know, companies like Apple, you know, they're like the largest market cap company in the world, the most valuable brand in the world, attract the best talent without fail. And there was a bit of hubris in all of these companies, assuming that they could just state the goal of the CEO and that goal would become reality. So technology was definitely um, starting to lean on people coming back. Wall Street as well, you know, Wall Street in a rush to get people back into the office. It goes into here, everyone from uh, Morgan Stanley and Goldman. I mean, Goldman here is asking its employees to be back by, at the office this week. And this is back in June. June. Okay. Bank of America saying, giving people a deadline, right? That kind of Labor Day deadline to get back into the office. Morgan Stanley, be back in the office by September or else. Like how ominous is this? Really threatening language. Everyone saying it's gonna happen, we're coming back. You know, tough luck, like it or not. Um, and then the questions of course were like, well, why? Why is this happening? And you started seeing in May and June, people starting to question. And this is when all the rationalizations were coming out, if you remember. It was all the same BS stuff that we keep hearing. Stuff about corporate culture, stuff about how do we train young people, uh, stuff about spontaneous innovation. I went through an entire video debunking the lies these stories promoted. You can see it here if you're interested. And as good as I think that video is, I know that I wasn't the only person to see through this BS. In fact, I made a second video, which I'll link to here also, that tells you where all these lies are coming from. I even called it propaganda from an organized cabal. And yes, that may seem a little bit hyperbolic, but isn't it interesting that so many of these return to office pieces all came out at the exact same time, all spouting the same flawed logic, all beating the same drums of return, return, return. And then just as suddenly they all stopped. It's almost as if someone in some large corporate office somewhere, or more likely in their Hamptons Mansion's home office, ran the numbers and realized that, oops, they misjudged the rollout of this media campaign and that darn Delta variant and ended up pulling the whole plug on the whole thing. Now, this is a complete conspiracy theory with no basis in fact, but it's a fun story to hold in your brain when you start to look at the flood of stories that are starting to appear now, for whatever reason, that the propaganda campaign has failed. Take a look at these. Okay, let's start with this article from GBH in Boston. 
uh, with possibly the most understated and underplayed headline ever. Some employees never want to give up remote work. Yeah, some. Try like 88% of polled employees don't want to go back into the office full time. But yeah, I think that gets to the, the basic point is that uh, the press has started realizing the truth. Like you can't, you can't keep facing the reality and denying reality for months and months on end. You know, and one of the many reasons why people want to stay remote are things such as social justice and microaggressions, disability uh, accommodations. There's so many benefits that people are finding uh, to remote work besides just the commute and living someplace other than a major metro city. I mean, this is a really, um, really heart touching story uh, about uh, this woman, Erin, and how she has dealt with microaggressions, people wanting to touch her hair, all sorts of things as uh, a result of who she is and how she presents in person and how the remote work has really allowed her to avoid some of that. She says that she actually wants to be in person more often than she is now because she feels she needs to face these, uh, these problems head on. But it does show you how uh, limiting certain amounts of interactions have some unintended positive consequences. One of the problems that was often brought up in those talking points of the return to work crowd was how hard it was to bring on new hires. Well, you know what? Many people have been working in their first jobs without ever stepping foot into the office for over a year and a half. And what's happening is that yes, it is different. Of course it's different. But the world is different and the future is going to be more and more different. And so these young people are learning and adapting to starting jobs and working in jobs in a remote world. And instead of saying that that's a problem, isn't that exactly what they need to be learning? Um, so I, I think this article by US News is actually hitting it on the head that actually there are some benefits and opportunities for people starting and training of people. Uh, this was an article that the AP put out that was everywhere here. It's the Mercury News uh, picked it up, but this was in every major newspaper. And it's basically saying that the Silicon Valley uh, went remote quite early in the pandemic. Uh, but then as they try to bring people back, as we saw, it has been a lot harder. Because what's happening, as Apple is running headlong into, is... People like Tim Cook don't actually get to decide what the hundreds of thousands of employees do. Uh, the employees have real power. We have real power and we are less and less afraid to use it. You know, we understand that it has become a people business and we are fighting back. People are fighting back at Apple. They're fighting back at Facebook. They're fighting back at Google and Alphabet. They're fighting back at my own organization that I work for. They're fighting back everywhere because we want to stay remote. And I think this article from ZDNet talks about that tech's biggest priorities have changed, but not everyone has realized it. And the biggest thing is that it's about teams. This is a people business. Knowledge work is Yes, it's about the knowledge, but it's about the people who have the knowledge. It's about the people that have the brains and have the skills. It's a talent game. And the people with the, the best talent win, and the best talent want remote work. Now, of course, maybe there is no conspiracy. Maybe there was just a rash of articles that were all pre-written for a predicted future return that failed to materialize. Maybe we're just seeing the long arm of the market of ideas as people only click on and share information that they agree with. Or maybe, the first major battle of the office wars has been won, and we are victorious. Thanks for watching Live Work Live. Please share and subscribe if you like what you see. And until next time, remember work is not a place, it's a pursuit. See y'all next week.